Okay, we've got to uh, mark the bottom sides of our rear spars and of course you don't really have to mark front and rear, it's obvious this here's the front side here but we'll put bottom on it. We'll do that in several places and And then I just cut the, uh, well, it's two degrees. It says to match the, uh, the main spars, same angle. That's not so critical as uh, there's plenty of gap there between them. Now, the uh, tangent point we're going to use for the holes, uh, the mounting holes on the brackets, that's what's going to set our angle and the height for our our bracket that'll make it match the main spar. Yeah, when building up for the strut on this here rear spar, this here needed build up. Once I needed 164th, but the only 164th material I had was narrow, so threw uh, another piece in to cover the last eighth of an inch, and I'll just cut that off with my oscillating saw once it's all dried and okay so we've got all the uh, extra little pieces trimmed off and since we're going to cut the top edge at 15 degrees the, the bottom side is going to be against the fence on the saw so we're going to go ahead and take the sander and orbital sander there and just run this whole edge make sure there's no glue or anything that's holding it up anywhere Okay, I'm trying to beat thunderstorms here tonight, so uh, we're going to cut this 15 degree angle. Yeah, I guess I need uh, something back there too. I'll just move that in-feed roller, move it back quite a bit. There we go. Now we, uh, now we have to uh, adjust the saw blade relative to the top corner of this. This is, by the way, this is the top. You have to make sure you're cutting the top edge. And uh, we want it to be just shy of this top corner right there. So first we'll set 15 degrees. That's 15 degrees. Now let's... Uh, I don't like this blue insert that came with the saw. It's not the best. Oh, geez, of course. Now I'm gonna run this through, although I know it's a little bit big. I'm gonna go in and get the one rib that I have the smallest smallest opening in they're all within about 15 thousandths of each other but I'm gonna get it and make sure it slides on here and, uh, and then cut them both to that size and so you see we've got like perfect fit just wiggle wobble it this one will be the tightest one I hope I think this is the tightest one if it isn't It'll take very little to make the anyone's any of the others fit on there. But and then when you do the geodetic, it also runs at this angle, so it'll be nice and perfect angle. Huh, let's get the other one cut. So now I've stacked them up bottom to bottom, back to back, and get ready to drill all the positions. I need holes just like I did with the main spars but before I can do that of course I have to make the brackets now I sawed them all off with the bandsaw at work just to speed that up now I got to round one end and uh, drill all the holes and uh, and then I can drill use them to mark the uh, the different positions on the rear spar but I think I'll start by cleaning up my bench of course I got to leave this here my granddaughter gave me some repair work to do. Her bow came off. Hopefully T88 works on that. Well, we just 
just beat the rain. Got everything brought in and started lightening. Well, I got them all benched off and uh, fairly rounded on the end, so I'll take one of these and do dead or uh, do a um, center punch where the holes go, and then I'll stack them all up and clamp them together and then go ahead and drill down through them. And then I'll pull one of them off and link up that hole with the 96 and a half inch by one inch off of here. Line that up right there. And then I'll mark these holes where it gets attached back here. So, right between those two lines and on that radius. Right there. And then five more inches. And from there, it's oh, what is that? Two and a quarter. Two and a quarter from there. Then we'll just go ahead and do the half inch. This is just slightly less than one inch wide. And so we'll just set this for a half inch. And where they overlap, we'll just go between them. Sometimes that's more accurate or easier. Easier to become more accurate than... Then I line them up off of the tip right there. So I get all the tips even and I clamp it up. I'll put another clamp about halfway up and we'll go ahead and just drill them. I'll drill this hole first, drop a bolt down through it, and then drill the other two. So let's go ahead and start with the root and uh, whereas, the, whereas the main spar was four inches up from the bottom and an inch and a half over from this straight vertical line uh, the rear spar is two inches out and an inch and a quarter up from the bottom of the spar so we use a 24 inch square which has an inch and a half and then a two inch on this end we need to be two inches out and an inch and a quarter up so bring that straight over don't just guesstimate you don't want to be a sixteenth off or something so inch and a quarter up from the bottom of the spar and two inches out so right there is where we want to put this hole and pay close attention when I first laid this down here I was sitting there going like this and and lining this up and <clears throat> and, uh, and then took a gander, of course, what I'm doing, and I've got it backwards. This is how it goes. It's, it goes from the top side towards the bottom, 
and just line up right there should be perfect and so we got that lined up we got centers in both holes okay now you want to be very careful here because at this point you are determining your angle of incidence between between the front spar its um, tangent point and this one and then where you drill your holes in the carry through beam in your upper fuselage is going to set your angle of attack or angle of incidence and uh, so these are things that you want to get as closely as you can several people have mentioned uh, not having very many resources and that so I'll go back to oh, a simple drill, drill, drill jig to get straighter holes and do it that way you don't have to use a block of steel you can if you can get a, a, a hole a hole through a block of wood use a piece of hardwood not something soft like pine but get a per fairly and you can get a perpendicular hole drilled through it that's good enough and you just take and set set your point down in your dimple that you've created and uh, squeeze down on this and wiggle your drill around so you can let your drill find its freest center well turn it up to high speed oh that's a crappy drill okay we should have it deep enough now that we can just follow the hole next hole slide it up the drill get it in the dimple drop it down squeeze this down if you got the capability go ahead and clamp this down your drill drill jig those will be just probably just about as close as what I did with the drill press There we go. That's a much better spinning drill. Whoop, I forgot we got space. Or no, that's all the way through both of them. There we go. Yeah, they're clamped together, but there's a space underneath them. There you got it five relatively straight holes in as many minutes
probably five minutes to do all of this.